Let's get the read on all this. Uh, the Fox Business is Jackie DeAngelis. We have the Monson Group CIO, David Monson, and Eight Squared Research is Heatha Herzog. Heatha, um, obviously what, what everyone wants to hear out of the Federal Reserve Chairman is you are going to cut rates and it will be by at least a quarter point, although a good many want to see half a point. He's not going to be so black and white, but what do you expect? This has happened over the course of the S&P, 17 times, it's been within the, the when the S&P has been at its all-time high, up within 2%. It's happened seven times since the S&P has been at, at its all-time high. What, what has happened? The, they, they, they cut rates. Okay. So, so, so there's history to this. This is history, okay. exactly. And what is also interesting is that every time they cut the rates, the S&P has surpassed itself. The need for so, it? Yeah. I'm not the expert. You guys are. But, I mean, it, we're doing okay, aren't we, Dan? Yeah, I think the reason to be upset about it is the reasons that they're offering. When I hear that language of we're so disappointed we're not creating 2% inflation, we're so disappointed we're not having the value of your money every 36 years. That's what they're saying. That's yeah. the math of it. It's a very good point. They do not, you are not supposed to target a, a positive inflation number when your mandate is sound money. So I understand that they're trying to get to an average place that fights off deflationary pressures. The bottom line is there isn't a need for it. They're stuck with this one. We're looking to September and December. That's really what's going to matter for markets. I have to agree. Look, I've been watching the bank earnings really closely. The banks are doing pretty well. Um, low interest rates can be a little bit of a problem. Exposure to China can be a problem as well. But overall, the numbers look really good. You have that retail sales figure come in pretty strong, too, which indicates maybe we will see higher inflation. Four times stronger than we thought. Right. It so when you put all these factors together, I think the Fed really at 50 basis basis point cut would be very severe, and I just don't think the market needs it. Just because investors want something doesn't mean that you necessarily have to give it to them, or at least you can put the pause pedal on um, and wait until later in the year and see what happens with China trade. Because when I hear the president say he's a little, you know, we're, we're far apart again, I get a little nervous about yeah, that. And if you wonder which is going to win out, Heather, right? I mean, if you have the, the uncertainty of the China deal, I, I guess the flip side of that is the Federal Reserve would come to the rescue and and do what it can on the rate front. But if you have a deal, just the opposite, right? What's also, you know, I've been watching retail for you know, the last 13 years. And even if there, the, these talks about, you know, potential trade issues, it is not having an effect on the consumer. And that's what we look at. When the consumer, I mean, look at what we just mentioned, the retail sales numbers. It is the the, the consumer is not impacted by that. And we've been talking not at about, all. Does that surprise you? Well, at all. Not at all. In fairness, none of the tariffs yet have targeted the consumer. They've purposely not targeted the consumer. It's about one percent. And only a fraction of them are here because a lot of them were delayed coming. The next three hundred right? billion but that they're threatening is almost entirely direct. Based to on what you all point. are saying, even just discussion about it potentially impacting the consumer would have some sort of halo effect on that, and it has not. It refuses. In fact, the consumer remains strong. I mean, there's been a gain of 2.6% year over year on retail sales. But wage That's growth is 3.1%. You have to wonder what consumer spending would be without the tariff factor there. I agree it's very minimal, but we don't. there's no doubt that at some point tariffs impact spending. But ultimately, well, what if we don't get will. a China deal? They we will, will and they I, won't. I we think will. we've demonstrated that we're a nation that doesn't really save that much. People are going <laughs> to continue to buy what they need, right. even if the prices well, are marginally higher. It's well, now, 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 now. Right. <laughs> Blame it all on us. Exactly. Um, but the bottom line is, I, you know, I always say I look at it like gas prices, whether they're three dollars or two fifty. If it's Fourth of July and you want to take the family out on a vacation, you're just going to figure out a way to do it. And yeah. it's the same when it comes to buying a shirt at Walmart or, or wherever. I don't know. Um, you know. One of the things I also look at is the way the president seems to be positioning this China argument. Uh, you know, going so far as to say they're open to another three hundred twenty five billion dollars worth of goods being targeted. And now uh, maybe with an idea by Peter Thiel to look into whether China is mucking around with Google and, and, and security types are working too closely with Google. In other words, that this doesn't end, this back and forth. That's the greatest thing that could happen for markets is for it to not end. Just continue looking like it's about to end, but never actually end. To just sort of keep it extended. It's probably what's best for the president politically, too. Because this enables him to continue using the China posturing as a political point, which I think his base really loves. And but I he get would it. need a deal in the end. At just some point, you do. Right? You can't let it go all the way 
way the way it's threatened to go a couple times now. But this kind of limbo mode, markets seem to like, the consumer seems to like, and I think really his voters like. But you need an ending, and I think they'll get it. The question is, when you bring up those other issues that he's pulling into it, and what and what uh, Peter brought up uh, the other night, I wonder how comprehensive this deal will end up being. I think that's going to make a big difference in the outcome. You know, he did, uh, there was concern about whether the Fed is fostering a melt up. That, in other words, we can keep going up, 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 up. You know, we're only, what, less than 10 percent from, what, 30,000 on the yeah. Dow. I mean, what do you make of that? Well, I think that's what everyone would essentially want. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want to see the Dow continue to con to continue to rise. Um, is it expensive here at these levels? 18 times forward earnings, almost, almost 18 times. So the reality is it's expensive versus historical, but nowhere near the 20, not obscene, 25, right. okay. not like you saw in 2000 and 2007. What do you make of that? I mean, that, I mean, that's certainly a point too. Um, I think that, you know, what's the, what's the uh, after effect? I mean, are we going to have a complete meltdown and then we go back to what, 25,000 down 25,000? I don't 25, see frothy that's what crazy, me. but I don't see the frothy crazy. And it's like we had right before the, the, the meltdown and the Internet and all the, those issues. I think I the selective that. frothiness and that's and that's the issue I'd be concerned about is, OK, so the whole market's trading 18 times. But what are some of those big tech, cool tech, new Good tech point. companies trading at? I see Would so you much. avoid them? I am avoiding them. Really? Yeah, what absolutely. are you buying? We're we're dividend growth people. So we're buying companies okay. that make money, give it to us, things like, like that. Like Goldman Sachs. Well, Goldman is becoming a little dividend player. It's amazing what happens when the, the regulators start letting you distribute capital to your shareholders. All right, oil uh, out of nowhere just dropped uh, 3% after we got when that Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, says that Iran now is ready to negotiate about its uh, missile program. All right, and I, I had misstated before saying that this was talking optimism of the North Korea deal, so I apologize for that. But obviously, looking at this, you do have to wonder about North Korea because that, too, was looking kind of antsy. Yeah, I don't I don't I agree about the stock market that you've gotten more jumpy in markets around some of these tweets and things and they last very short lived with oil markets and Jackie would know this better than I would. I bet you it's a third of the time in the last four years that we've had two and three percent movements up or down on much less news than Secretary of State saying something. Uh, in the 20, idea in being that if things uh, detensify there, it doesn't rattle the markets. Right. So if we if we've moved down today in WTI by three percent in 2015 on any given day, that would have been a light volatility day. Right. Uh, so that is true. The, the moves definitely haven't been extreme as we've seen them in, throughout history, and that's because there's so much more supply in the market. But I do think what Pompeo said, if it is indeed true right. uh, that the Iranians are willing to negotiate, is, is really a huge step in this whole thing. Our sanctions uh, on them were completely crippling. And you saw over the last course of the last couple of months, the bad behavior, being violent, trying to threaten us, trying to up and, and um, sort of up the ante and the rhetoric. Um, it didn't work. And the president I'm wondering if it's a reflection on just weak demand, global growth. Well, the, uh, look, if oil's gone from 59 to 57 on some modest optimism that things are going right. to get better at Iran, 59 was not exactly pricing that we were about to go to war with Iran. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, a very good point. Uh, right. So That's I just I point. think that there's traders involved. There's a lot of speculative activity that is jumpy.